Hello, my name is Courtney Epps and I'm with OTB Tax and I'm here today to share with you a couple things about how to reduce your taxes for businesses and individuals. It's always been a passion of mine to help educate people on taxes and what they can do to make their life more relaxing and less taxing. So I'm going to get right into it and share with you a little bit about myself. I'm from Greenville, South Carolina, and I've been an accountant for the last 16 years. I went to Coastal Carolina University, which is where I graduated, and after college and during college, I worked for a very large regional CPA firm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I've specialized for the last 16 years in corporate, business, and payroll taxes, and I've also owned and operated an insurance agency and an accounting firm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where I had over 3,500 clients. So I'm going to get right into what we're going to share with you today. Here's an outline. The myths that impoverish our country, I'm going to go into four of those. The commonly overlooked tax deductions and credits that you may be missing on your tax return how to lower your taxes, and then I'm going to show you an example of a second household income. So a lot of people think that they just need to go out and get another stream of income and they will be taken care of and they realize really quickly that they're not. And then I'm going to share with you the advantages of having a home-based business and what are tax-deductible business expenses. Then additional reasons to start a home-based business. And if your CPA says you can't write these off, I'm going to share with you what you should do and how to prepare for tax time. Then we're going to go into how can I save money right now. So I'm going to show you how to do that. If you get audited where you need to turn. Experts, what they're saying, and I'll share with you a little bit more um, detail on that as well. So getting right into it, myths that impoverish our country. I didn't make a lot of money this year, so I don't need to know about tax planning. Well, this is absolutely false. If you are a consultant or have a smaller home-based business, you have access to the last great tax shelter in this country. If your deductions in your business exceed your income, you can use that business loss against any form of income that you or your spouse have, such as rents, dividends, pensions, or even wages. So it's very important to know and understand tax planning. Now, the second one is my home-based business or small business has to have a profit for three out of five years. This is one of the biggest myths that I've ever seen. Hundreds of people, including accountants, have said this to me. This is absolutely false. Congress simply wants you to run your business as if you are in business. So if you're attempting to earn income, it is definitely tax deductible for you. Now, the third myth that we have is my accountant, spouse, or friend takes care of my taxes. This is the funniest one to me because that would be like telling me that your doctor takes care of your health. And the biggest problem with that is that you are the one that takes care of your health. So if you're sick, it's not your doctor's fault. The same thing if you're overpaying on, on your taxes, it's not your spouse or your friend's fault. It's your fault that you don't know the tax knowledge. Now, the fourth one is tax knowledge. Tax knowledge won't save me that much money anyway. Well, that's one of the greatest misconceptions because most of the money that you're actually spending is going to pay for taxes. And I'm going to share with you how we can fix that here shortly. So, commonly overlooked tax deductions and credits. State sales tax. A lot of people have no clue that you can write off all the state sales tax. You just need to make sure that you keep up with your receipts. Out-of-pocket charitable contributions. Some people know about this, some don't. Things that you give to goodwill. Also, cash um, contributions can be treated as expenses as well. Now, one of the bigger ones is student loan interest paid by mom or dad, as well as paying for college tuition for the mom and dad. Those are really big tax deductions. Now, you've got the child care credit. You can actually take up to $3,000 a year for child care credit. And then also expenses, things like daycare uh, expenses that can be written off. Then you have an earned income credit. The earned income credit can actually be written off up to $5,600 a year based on your income. So you definitely want to get with an accountant to see how much you can actually receive on that. 
And then the big one that's actually coming up here lately is cost related to caring for a parent. A lot of people have their parents in um, homes. They have parents that they're paying for medical bills, things like that, and those actually can be written off as, as expenses. And then you've got your own personal medical expenses. Those medical expenses could be medical bills, prescription drugs, and also insurance, as well as long-term care insurance. So that's a big deal these days. And then we've got IRA contributions. A lot of people don't realize that you actually have up until April 15th of the following year to contribute to an IRA. So if you actually owe taxes, that's a way to save a little bit of money there. And then we've got contributing to health savings accounts. So that's a big deal. If you don't have one, you can actually open one yourself, even if you don't have one from your company. And then we've got deductions for self-employed. And see, this is the highest tax savings. And I'm going to spend the most amount of time on this because this is how it works. You can lower your taxes dramatically by having a business or technically a home-based business. And so here you go. Lowering your taxes. If you're an employee, the taxes deducted from your paycheck are based on your payroll income. If you have a loss from a business, it could potentially lower your tax bracket and it goes dollar for dollar against any income that you have, including pensions, dividends, retirement, and payroll income. So most people believe that in order to get, get ahead, that they need to go out and get a second stream of income. And having more than one income in a family does not necessarily create a significant difference. And so here's an example of that. Jane's husband makes $40,000 a year, which is about $3,400 a month. When Jane wasn't working, they had more expenses than money. So Jane decided to get a job. Jane earned a $20,000 a year salary, but only took home $1,025 after she deducted all of her work-related expenses. Yet she could have netted the entire $20,000 had she earned it in a home-based business. This would be an increase of 18 times her take-home pay as an employee. The results are extremely startling, and I'll show you how the example breaks down. So here's her gross income is $20,000, less the state and federal taxes, less the Social Security taxes. She has extra car expenses because she has to go to work every day. She had extra child care expenses. You've got extra lunches on the job, business clothes, dry cleaning, and increased food expenses. So her net take home is $1,025 a year. If Jane would have started a home-based business, she would not be spending more money than she's currently spending. She would continue to eat out and go on trips. Jane would still have car expenses for repairs, gas, and insurance, but with a home-based business, many of her expenses would become deductible. This concept is known as redirecting expenses, and I'll show you how important that is as we go through. Now, here's a couple other examples of why a home-based business is so advantageous. You will never maximize your income potential until you learn to get your taxes down to the legal minimum. And the biggest thing is, is that we have two tax systems in this country. One is for salaried employees and one is for small to home-based business owners. A home-based business will provide a more strategically beneficial position than just having a second job. And traditional job security has definitely declined over the last couple of years, and it's going to continue to do so, making home-based businesses so much more attractive. And you can actually save between two and $10,000 per year or more by starting your own part-time home-based business. So what is a tax-deductible business expense? The IRS actually determines any expense that is incurred for the purpose of gaining or producing income is incurred with a reasonable expectation of resulting in future business and is reasonable under the circumstances. So that's very broad what they're allowing you to write off. So redirecting your expenses allows you to take deductions for expenses that you already may be incurring anyway. So what can you deduct when you have a home-based business? First, you can deduct your home office. Now, to qualify for this, the area has got to be exclusively for business activities. If your kitchen table is doubling as your work desk, you cannot deduct it. However, if you have a dedicated room or even a portion of a room, you can deduct some of your housing expenses. 
You may have heard that the home office deduction is a big red flag and the IRS is more likely to audit you. Here's the thing. If you're legitimately entitled to the deduction, take it. It can be one of the most significant annual expenses that you can possibly have. So here's some other deductions. Supplies such as paper, printers, tablets, desk or office furniture, projectors, projection screens, computers. Advertising can be written off as well, including things like business cards, print ads, and magazines, yellow pages, postcards. All that can be considered advertising. You've also got utilities. So if you have a home office, you can write off a percentage based on the portion of your home office that is your office. The internet and telephone. So if you have internet at your home, you can write off a proportion based on the business use of your home. If you have a cell phone, that can be written off as well based on the percentage of the amount of time that you use your cell phone for business. And then you have things like cost of goods sold. So if you have to buy products for your company and sell those products, that would be a tax deduction. And then you've got travel. And so travel is very, very broad. If you attend a conference or you travel to meet a client, you can deduct these expenses, lodging, tips, you can deduct 50% of your meals, you can deduct transportation, commuting cost, all those are tax deductible expenses. And then you've got auto and commuting, which is a big deal. So if you travel to meet a client, you perform a job outside the home, you purchase business supplies, conduct research, or do any other kind of activity for your business, you can deduct this travel as auto and commuting cost. This includes a standard mileage deduction this year of 53 and a half cent per mile, or you can also do public transit fares, parking, and tolls as well can go along with that. Additional deductions that you can write off are software, subscriptions, monthly fees that you have to pay in order to stay in your business, insurance premiums, retirement contributions, child labor. This is a big, big um, expense that you can write off. So you can actually pay your children to work for you as long as they're actually doing work. Continuing education, such as trainings and seminars, and then you have fringe benefits if you have any employees, including your spouse. And fringe benefits are huge. They are non-taxable to the employee, and they're also business expenses for you as well. So I'm going to share with you how being an employee as opposed to being a business owner makes a huge difference. And the business owner could be an employee who has a home-based business. So we're going to start with $50,000 a year in income, gross income. We're going to subtract the standard deduction because if you're single or you're married, you automatically get a standard deduction or you can either take an itemized deduction. The single deduction is $6,300, married is $12,600. On top of that, you're entitled to a personal exemption. If you're single, it's $4,000. If you're married, it's $8,000. And for each additional child that you have in the family or dependent, that would be an additional $4,000 that you could write off. Now, you pay taxes on the adjusted gross income. So we take the $50,000 minus the $6,300 minus the $4,000. That would leave you with a single $39,700. If you're married you're going to be at $29,400 would be your adjusted gross income. Now, we're going to pay taxes on that. So taxes add up pretty quickly. When you're talking about self-employment taxes or if you're just talking about you have to pay the FICA taxes, which is 7.65%, plus you pay your state and federal taxes. So if you're single, you're paying on average of $15,741 in taxes, leaving you with a balance of $34,259. It doesn't leave much. And then when you're married, that's going to leave you with paying taxes in of $8,423 and your balance is $41,577. Well, here's what has to happen after that. You have living expenses. So you have your rent and you have mileage and you have vehicle repair and you have maintenance and wear and tear on your cars and you've got your phone bill and internet bill and meals and entertainment and child care and travel expenses. So all of that has to be deducted, leaving you 
with the average living expenses per year per household is about $20,000. So if you're single, you're bringing home about $14,000 at the end of the year to live off of and to pay for extras that you may have. And then if you're married, you're left with about $21,577. Well, that's not a lot of money. Okay, so the right side, we're going to show you as a business owner, or either it could be an employee who owns a home-based business. We're going to start with the same $50,000 a year. We're going to subtract the standard deduction, subtract the personal exemption, and now we get to actually deduct the business expenses that look a lot like the living expenses that we have on the left side, but now they're tax deductible because we redirected those expenses because we have a business. So then we get to pay taxes on that adjusted gross income. As a single person, the total income is $19,700 as far as adjusted gross. Now you're at a 28.65% tax bracket, and that's going to be a total of $5,644 in taxes. Whereas the married person is going to be a taxable income of $9,400, they're going to be at a 20.65% tax bracket, and that's going to be a total tax liability of $1,941. So you can see the difference is huge. A single person is going to save $10,097, and a married person will save $6,482 just by owning a home-based business. That is so big. So employees earn income they pay taxes, and then they purchase necessities. Whereas business owners are going to earn income, they're going to purchase their necessities, and then they pay taxes after that. So you can see where this could save you tons and tons of money. Now, how to prepare for tax time. Here's what you're going to need. You'll need to keep up with bank statements. If you have a business bank account, that will definitely help you if you were to ever get audited, but you need a bank account. You need your access to your credit card statements. And a tax software is definitely helpful, such as Deductor, TaxBot, or QuickBooks. And then you want to make sure you're logging all of your mileage. This makes life much easier if you were to ever get audited. Keep any cash receipts, although I don't suggest paying anything with cash. And the reason why, it's just very hard to keep up with cash receipts. And you want to contact your local tax accountant for answers to your questions. Now, what if your CPA says you can't write these off? Well, first, I would tell you to find someone else to do your taxes because you can legitimately write off everything that I'm talking to you about as long as you're attempting to earn an income. I've actually listed the publications here so you can go and check them out for yourself. Now, what if you get audited? So to be audit-proof, your business must be treated like a business, not a hobby. I don't know how much I can stress that. So you want to make sure that you're doing weekly or daily business activities to ensure it. If you have a business plan, that will definitely help you. Also, you need to conduct business in a business-like manner. You just want to look at a couple other businesses in your field and make sure that you are treating your business as if they are treating their business. Conducting activities like a similar profitable business. So you definitely want to look at other businesses in the industry and look and see what they're doing to become profitable. And so if you're following along with that, you're okay. You want to devote specific hours to your business, whether it be an hour a day, whether it be three hours a day, it does not matter as long as you are consistently devoting time to your business and treating it like a business. So how can you save money right now? One, you want to start a home-based business immediately. So the next thing is that most people that I see are overpaying throughout the year on taxes. And the reason why is because they don't understand their exemptions. I would get a W-4, look at the top of it, and go through and make sure you're actually deducting the amount of exemptions that you should be deducting. Because the thing is, is you don't want to be overpaying the government all year long and struggling on paying all your bills. You can get a refund back because you're paying too much in taxes and you can actually have your federal taxes not even taken out if you had a refund last year and expect to have a refund this year. But you want to make sure you get some tax advice before you do that. So instead of giving the government your money all throughout the year, this money could actually be used to help you start your own business, which would in turn save you more money on taxes.
So here's what the experts are saying. Sandy Botkin, he is a CPA, and he's also a former IRS attorney, has a lot of experience in taxes, and he wrote a book called Lower Your Taxes Big Time, which I use a lot of his information in doing this presentation for you today. He's a member of the Florida Institute of Certified Public Accountants. As a distinguished real estate instructor, he's taught at many, many universities, and he spent five years as a legal specialist in the office of chief counsel for the IRS. So here's what he's saying. You and I are taxed at every turn. Most of the taxes that we pay are disguised as a fee. Your license and registration, toll booths, hunting and fishing license, cosmetology license, insurance and medical license, building permits, and the list goes on. It's not just federal tax. You also have state, county, city, tourism tax, personal tax, and property tax. Are you feeling overtaxed yet? I know I am. Believe me, I could go on for several more paragraphs just outlining all the ways that we're taxed. Okay, just a couple more. What about your car? You paid tax on it when you bought it. Pay taxes when you license it. Next time you put gas in your car, look at the pump. You'll see a sticker explaining the breakdown of state and federal fuel tax you're paying. Are you tired of high gasoline prices? 25% of what you're currently spending for fuel is tax. Conservatively speaking, 50% of your gross income goes to some type of tax. This is why it's so important that you take every legal, honest, and ethical deduction that you have coming. Forbes says that the tax benefits of operating a home office can be very lucrative. Also, you've got Huffington Post that says if you use your car or truck to go from home to a business location, your mileage from home and back becomes tax-deductible expense. And then the IRS says you can deduct all of your travel expenses if your trip was entirely business-related. These expenses include the travel cost of getting to and from your business destination and any business-related expenses at your business destination. So we've shared with you a couple things about reducing your taxes for businesses and individuals. We've shown you commonly overlooked tax deductions, how to lower your taxes, how to prepare for tax time, how to make sure if you do get audited, what to look for and what you need to do, and what the experts are saying, and why home-based business is so advantageous for anyone out there. I hope you enjoyed this today. There's definitely more to come. There's more information that you may want to receive from us. So check us out on otbtax.com, and we'll be happy to schedule a free consultation with you today.